Dumelang. Welcome to Face the Nation. My name is Clement Banyatela. It's great to have you with us here on SABC News. On the show tonight, Ekuruleni has a new mayor. The ANC is back in charge in the metro. Nkosind Pile Pakaza has been elected as mayor uncontested. But how long is this arrangement going to last, given the frequent changes we have seen in the past? Gauteng Premier Panyazali Sufi joins us this evening. He's been at the forefront of negotiating coalition agreements in Gauteng. We'll also talk to him about ETOLs, which are coming to an end at midnight. But there are still questions about what happens to historic debt. We'll discuss these and other issues. Premier Panyazali Sufi is facing the nation tonight. So today we saw something we have not seen for quite a while in Hang councils. The Ekuruleni council electing Nkosind Pilek Takaza as mayor without violence or disruptions, which have become a regular sight in these council meetings. The meeting today was convened in an orderly manner. Remember what happened just a month ago? I mean, Swani has also seen disruptions. So has the Johannesburg Council, even Nelson Mandela Bay. I mean, who can forget this moment? I mean, that's embarrassing behavior by our politicians. The question now is, how long is this arrangement in Ekuruleni going to last? But more broadly, how do we ensure the sustainability of coalition agreements, especially now that we are potentially headed for a coalition government at national level, as polls predict? What lessons have been learned about coalitions? I don't think our legislation, as things stand now, is strong enough to help stabilize coalition government. It's failed to be futuristic by articulating how coalition governments can be embraced. And coalition governments are the future of our political landscape. So finding ways to stabilize them is important. And hopefully the amendment to the Municipal Structures Act will help bring about some stability that will strengthen these arrangements. Because we need coalition agreements that are legally binding. Maybe that's the answer. So that we don't have parties that will willy-nilly decide to join and leave agreements because they are not happy about the positions that they have received. And yes, some people argue that the solution to the coalition crisis is not a legal one, right? Because it's not possible to legislate political behavior or force political parties into stable coalitions. But I imagine that there's a difference that the law can make. I think if we are being honest, on the most part, some parties have not shown the maturity to compromise and put politics aside and put South Africans and service delivery first. So again, I'm asking you, what questions, in fact, measures do you think are necessary to ensure stable and sustainable coalition governments? Please send us a 30 second WhatsApp voice note right now on 078 459-1897. That number is there on your screen. Remember to tell us your name and say name and where you are sending us the voice note from. You can also send us an X on at Face the Nation SABC. After the break, Premier Panyazali Sufi faces the nation. Stay with us. Welcome back. The city of Ekuruleni has a new mayor and sees the return of the ANC at the helm. The party's convener in the metro, Dr. Nkosind Pile Klagaza, has been elected as the new executive mayor of Ekuruleni. The mayoral seat was left vacant two weeks ago when the African Independent Congress's Sivu Yile Motwana was ousted in a vote of no confidence. The council had previously failed to meet. The Gauteng Premier Panyazali Sufi joins us in studio to talk about this and other issues. Uh, Premier, thank you so much for making time. Good evening. Welcome to Face the Nation. Thank you so much, Madam Mitch, and congratulations for uh, presenting this show. Thank really you very much. So yeah. you are now back in charge in Ekuruleni. Does that mean the ANC is now fully in charge or it's in a coalition agreement? 
Well, we've been persuaded to, to be part of what we call government of local unity. Uh, you will recall, uh, Madam Major, that uh, when voters went to the elections in 2021, uh, out of the 11 municipalities that are available in the, uh, Gauteng, uh, the ANC lost 10. Uh, we only won one municipality. So we peacefully occupied our opposition benches in Ekurule, uh, Nitswane, uh, together with Johannesburg, Mohali, all those municipalities. We, we said our voters felt that we were not representative enough, we were not dealing with the work that they wanted, and therefore we took our opposition benches and allowed uh, uh, those that were voted to run the municipalities. Um, and on the basis of that, we then went into a strategic session on how best can we learn from these mistakes mm -hmm. and reposition the ANC. Um, what, what does a government of national unity mean? So when the mayor announces his new mayoral members, well, MMC uh, positions, does that mean that that's going to be distributed among the different political parties? Yes, the parties that obviously agrees with our view, uh, and there are parties that uh, don't agree with the view, and on the basis of those that agree, they establish a government and run that particular government. So it's a multi-party uh, government, uh, because there's no outright winner, but mm. in Ekuruleni, uh, for the very first time, uh, we managed to persuade all political parties that the party that has a majority uh, in that municipality should be allowed to lead that municipality. Shouldn't that have been the principle that you were going by, especially when you were negotiating these arrangements in Johannesburg, in Swani, in Ekuruleni? Because even at the NEC meeting, the ANC admitted that it was a mistake to almost give the smaller parties to run as mayors and you distribute MMC positions amongst yourselves with your partners. Coalition discussions, uh, Madam Major, are unpredictable. Uh, they, they depend on each municipality and also they're influenced by political mood of a country or of a province. And that is why you see all these changes that are taking place. I mean, in Nelson Mandela, there were changes. In uh, uh, Eteguini, there were changes because of uh, the nature of multi-party discussion. So we didn't have a framework as the African National Congress, but immediately after uh, the NEC established a task team to deal with this matter, gave us a framework, and this is the framework that said, where we are in majority, we must lead, um, and uh, where possible, we should be in a position to get the position of the executive mayor. So it's the first time after the adoption of that document that we felt that we need to implement it. But it can be implementable in Ekuruleni and find it extremely difficult to implement it in Tswan, mm -hmm. or uh, extremely difficult to implement it in uh, Mohali City, purely because of the uh, political parties that, it, that are involved there. So there's no one that can confirm that there is a, a one script for coalition discussion in all municipalities. They differ, and they're very, very difficult, I must say. Uh, I had the way. EFF say after um, Tragaza was elected that they are happy and they want to hit the ground running. What does that mean about how they're going to be accommodated in the executive? Because uh, previously they've argued they want to be put in strategic positions. Um, for instance, do you give the MMC for, for finance position to the EFF? <coughs> Madam Major, I must be honest, you know, for the first time, I've been engaged in all the negotiations of all these uh, metro uh, or coalition governments. For the first time, I was touched by political maturity of political parties. Uh, all political parties came and said, it's no longer about our political identity. It's about the citizens of Ekuruleni, and it's no longer about our political interest. It's it the interest them so of the so long to realize that. <laughs> well, not necessarily, because the two weeks of hard bargaining uh, uh, indeed persuaded us that we are better off working together rather than uh, being divided. Um, and that political maturity reached its culmination uh, this uh, afternoon uh, when we agreed that we'll have a government of local unity. Whichever party that want to participate in this must raise their hands and on the basis of that will then be in a position to constitute them. But the reality is that the EFF was part of this government uh, and the reality is that uh, the ANC had more seats in that municipality. So that must be incorporated, So, including the allocation of MMC seats. And I, I remain hopeful that when the, the new mayor, uh, uh, Dr. Kagaza, announces his executive committee, it will be all inclusive of all the parties that are agreeing to work with us, including the EFF. Uh, but I'm asking about strategic positions because the finance MMC is an important one um, in the metro. And the EFF previously said, we have been running that 
um, that department and we've been doing well, even though there have been some who, who disagreed, are they worth returning to that position of finance, given the concerns that have been raised about the, the MMC do, um, who held that position? The last minute discussions, Madam Major, was that whoever become executive mayor must relinquish the, the, the finance position, whoever once the finance position must relinquish the executive mayor position. So on the basis of this, now that the ANC has taken the position of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the executive mayor, it will relinquish uh, the position of finance and whoever uh, that the executive mayor feel competent to occupy that position, occupy that position. And the EFF have raised their hands as part of this discussion and this resolution that will give them the position of uh, finance to, to run that meeting. Let me ask this. Do you think Nkulele Dunga has done a good job as the finance MMC? Well, I have no mandate to evaluate uh, a member of any other political party. I've got a mandate to evaluate the collective that has been deployed either by the political party that I lead or by the citizens of that municipality. So we leave that to those that are in that municipality to make that observation. I'm asking that because Tlagaza was on the SABC um, a couple of weeks ago and he said the position of finance, MEC, MMC in Ekuruleni, leaves a lot to be desired. He doesn't believe um, that... Nkulule Godunga has done a good job. In fact, even some within the ANC have made a claim that the EFF is using that as a cash cow. Well, where we stand, because we're establishing a new formation, we're establishing a new government. So if that government was not performing, that's the reason why there was a vote of no confidence. And you know, if you have a vote of no confidence against the mayor, the MMC uh, also collapses. Uh, now that we have established a new government, I hope those concerns will not continue. You, you spoke about that for the first time you were met with that political maturity yeah. from all the political yeah. parties. And I suppose as incredible as that is, and I was saying in my comment that mm. we saw something we don't normally see in councils. It was very orderly. Yeah. Uh, there were clearly discussions. People decided we're going to put service delivery first and put yeah. our political differences aside. The challenge though is this is coming and I know it's better late than never. Yeah. But because of the political immaturity, Service delivery has collapsed in a completely. Community. What do you say to the citizens? Now that's the reason why we took the stand away what we, we uh, as the African National Congress that uh, we are not disparate for power. We are not going to allow it to be used, uh, and we are not going to allow it to be abused. But most importantly, we are not going to satisfy our own egos at the expense of service delivery. Uh, we are on the side of our people, on the side of service delivery, and if there is no service delivery, we will pull out of government. Uh, and that day we have publicly communicated that we can continue to be part of a government uh, that doesn't render basic services, uh, 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 rendering and ensuring that grass is cut, uh, football pitches are ready, swimming pools, uh, garbage is collected. I mean, we, we had a situation where all those things were not attended. And that is why as the SNC, as the NC, we took a stand to say, we are not going to be part of this government. Uh, and we registered our dissatisfaction. And the parties that were part of our discussion accepted the NC position. But indeed, uh, there's no trend. Because you can't be part of a government that does not have a common program of action. We didn't know what we were doing collectively as a team. Mm. Uh, budget will be changed or, or allocations will be made without consultation and many other things. So when uh, all the political parties that are running that municipality agreed to that, let's review this. Um, and and, and uh, we're, we're, we're indeed satisfied that we can go back to the negotiation table and develop a product that is a win-win for all of us. And uh, we are quite convinced that what we had today, it's a win-win for all of us. What accountability um, as the ANC do you take? I've often heard some people who live in Ekurulene who say, we have voted in the majority. Yes, we didn't give the ANC the overwhelming majority yeah. of 50% plus one to govern this metro, but I mean, when you look at the wards that you have won as the yeah. ANC, you've got the majority. And many of them were disappointed that you had agreed to a someone with a 1% party to come and be a mayor and you're distributing MMC positions among other parties. And I understand that this is the nature of coalition agreements, yeah. but to the citizens who feel I don't know if I should give you that opportunity again. What do you say to them? But as you go to Swan, we don't run Swan at all. Uh, we are not part of that local authority. But if there's no water, I know my phone is inundated with calls. Yeah. Uh, people don't differentiate whether you are political X, Y, or political X, B. Uh, if they need services, they need services. And they expect you uh, to render those particular services. So indeed, to accept. And that's the reason why, as the African National Congress, we felt that we can't continue with this arrangement. Uh, it's sacrificing 
uh, principles that uh, we are not prepared to compromise, uh, especially where service delivery is affected. We are not part of governance structures. We are not part of decision making. But our name is attached, and our people feel that we are part of that governance structure. So this new arrangement uh, with the executive mayor uh, 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 that uh, understand that as history, that as experience, that was part of the negotiations. I must say uh, that political maturity will be carried beyond uh, where we are now. Okay. So we are heading into the national elections. Yeah. What lessons have you learned about coalitions? Because, I mean, in the last elections, you just got about, what, was it 51% yeah, in Gauteng or so? Yeah. You just barely made it. Uh, there are polls that are coming through with their own predictions of possibly dipping below 50%, yeah. but we'll all know after the 29th of May. With the lessons you've learned in Tswane, in Johannesburg, in Ekuruleni, how are you going into these elections with that possibility that they there may be a need to get into a coalition agreement in Gauteng. We have to work extra, extraordinary hard, Madam H, as the African National Congress. <laughs> uh, coalitions are not ideal. Uh, I will not, and I'm still not a fan of coalitions. Uh, they are erratic, disruptive, uh, and they've disrupted service delivery. It's a fact uh, that when the ANC was running Swan, uh, we had three mayors in 16 years, from the year 2000 until 2016, only three, three mayors. Uh, 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 in the last five years, when coalition government was running that metro, they have six mayors, five years. Uh, so, so it's very erratic, very disruptive. Uh, so there's no planning. But also, it is moods or emotions riddled. I mean, since I became the premier of this province, uh, coalition government of uh, Tswani does not attend my meetings when we plan about the future of Gauti, uh, because they feel that uh, they're not part of this thing. Mm. It doesn't work that way. Uh, the roads are interlinked. Uh, planning is interlinked. Uh, we want to develop, because we're excited that the growth of Rustenburg, for example, is coming towards us. It's not going to Mafikeng in Northwest. Rustenburg is coming to Krugersdorp. Krugersdorp is coming to Ranfontein. You go to Polokwane, uh, part of Polokwane just after Karozel is coming towards us. Uh, you go to Sosolbeck, part of Sosolbeck, it might be in the Free State, it's coming to us. Harry Smith, for example, is one town that has the potential to grow. It's not going to Bloemfontein, it's coming towards us. So we need to plan together. But coalition does not allow that. People believe they're an island they can't do. For example, local government, you've got an association of local government called SALGA. They are not participating in it. So, so coalitions are disruptive and God forbidding. I really don't wish them to be part of, uh, 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 of our province or national government because you can't account to 16 heads. Just imagine cabinet that needs to meet. 16 heads of those political parties must determine who must be Minister of Finance, which policy must be implemented. You will spend more time dealing with policy positions rather than actual work. So I'm not a fan, I'm not a fanatic, and I'm glad that the African National Congress has taken a posture. Let's work extraordinary hard. We have learned from this coalition, I think our citizens have learned from this coalition, that the best way is to have a single party that can be given the mandate and it can be held accountable as a party so that it can run the affairs of either a province or a country. Do you think legislation will help? I know the Minister of COCTA um, is introducing the amendment to the Municipal Structures Act. My feeling is that why did this not happen much earlier? Because already in 2016, we saw this kind of instability. It's two ways, Madam uh, Basic legislation, for example, if a government has been established uh, and no one is an outright winner, must give timelines by when that government must be established. We don't have that. So it can be endless. Uh, so that kind of legislation is needed. Uh, secondly, on emotions. You can't just have motions every month. <laughs> uh, so if you have a motion per term, that must be legislated. And then uh, the management of that uh, coalition, I, I really believe it must be uh, legislated as well to say if you are a leader, if you want to change uh, allegiance and bring another part or another member, you should be in a position to do so within either the timelines or you should go through a certain process, including a majority party being included in government because that party has been voted by majority of our citizens, it's just that it didn't reach the threshold. So that kind of legislation might be needed, but where I stand, 
I can tell you the differences, the difficulties of running coalition governments will never stand any form of legislation. They are disruptive naturally and uh, they don't have the interest of voters at heart and uh, in most instances uh, it's about party political interest rather than the interest of voters. Who is they? Us as politicians? Well, all of us, uh, <laughs> all of us are involved. Uh, I don't want to exclude uh, the political party that I belong to, and I don't want to exclude other political parties because they've established what they call the Moon Pact. Uh, <laughs> but yesterday, the chairperson of uh, Action SA wrote a letter to uh, the DA Federal Council uh, complaining about the conduct of the uh, Democratic Alliance in the uh, municipality that we're talking about in Ekur Lane. Uh, Action SA tabled a motion a Moon Act Pact partner, DA, didn't support them. It abstained. It happened in Johannesburg when there was a mayor of a certain political party. So that environment on its own, as I say, it depends on the political party's interest. But uh, it's not something that we can uh, confidently confirm and say it's a political system that we need to use in our country. Maybe in other countries it's ideal, it's well. Uh, but I will uh, propagate that, especially the political party that I come from, will rather govern this country on our own uh, and, and ensure that we don't have this uh, quagmire that uh, we have to go through mm -hmm. almost every day. If you get to that quagmire, would you consider working with the DA? Seems to be something. Well, our approach is very simple. There are people that have pronounced they don't want to work with us, so they've eliminated themselves. So we'll work with whoever that wants to work with Including us. Including the so DA. Whoever wants to work with us, uh, we'll work with them. But those that have pronounced that they don't want to work with us, our message is very simple. Who said they want to work with you? Uh, so if you don't want to work with us, we'll not work with you. But those that believe they can work with us, uh, we are. But there are principles uh, that we are, we are not compromising on. Uh, uh, transformation is very key take into consideration the history of our country. Uh, inequality, uh, to close that gap of inequality is very key. And the principle of non racialism and the principle of ensuring that gender is at the center of resolving representativity mm. in our country, those are non-negotiable. So any political party that is at peace with those particular principles, mm. we are ready to work with them. Including the MK party? Whoever that is prepared to work with us. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's remind you mm. of the question we're asking you tonight. We have been asking you to send uh, tweets or X at uh, Face the Nation SABC. I'm asking this evening what measures you think are necessary to ensure stable and sustainable coalition governments. You can send us those WhatsApps on 078-459-1897. After the break, ETOLs are coming to an end at midnight. But there's an issue of historic debt. The Premier is celebrating, says Hure. Are you celebrating? Or are you wondering whether they're going to come after you for your outstanding debt? We're going to find out after this. Stay with us here on Face the Nation. Welcome back. To remind you of the question tonight, what measures do you think are necessary to ensure a stable and sustainable coalition government. Your tweets coming through at SABC, uh, Face the Nation SABC. Uh, proudly South African says, one brave political party must table a motion in parliament to amend the law that governs coalitions. Any party that receives any form of majority must be allowed to govern the municipality, legislature or parliament and be automatically given mayor, premier and president. Barry Martin says, all I can say is that coalition governments are very, uh, it's a very big risk, especially with so many broken promises from these political parties. Olile says, coalition government in South Africa does not work well, it's a bad system. Uh, that's Olile in Kukuletu. Asanda says problems start when political parties are self-serving, so much so that parties with one seat get the lead. Who put them in power? Was it us, the electorate, or we only matter during the elections? All right, thank you so much for your tweets. We'll also uh, play your WhatsApp voice notes as well uh, before we end the show. Premier, I want us to talk about ETOLs now. Yep. When are you officially switching them off? In the next uh, three hours or so, I'll be at the uh, um, main station in Midrand uh, together with the minister. I'll officially switch them off mm. one minute uh, before midnight. 
So, they're coming to an end, but the question South Africans are asking themselves tonight is whether they're going to be expected to pay the outstanding debt. The reason why e-tolls were unacceptable is because people claimed that we didn't consult them. That was the overriding message. They say, we're not consulted, uh, we're not part of this, so you see to finish. So we must consult them on the same issue because we'll be accused of taking decision on their behalf. Because it's not an easy decision to be made. Uh, for example, car hires. Uh, you hire a car and you are charged it all. Uh, uh, and and um, what do you do when we have to deal with that aspect? Tax. Uh, SARS has written to us to indicate that they need to be part of the resolution of this particular matter. There are people that have changed cars. Uh, there are people that have passed on. And there are people that have uh, vehemently refused to pay. And there are people that have loyally uh, <laughs> Uh, paid uh, until maybe midnight today. So we need to establish a team that they have to go and consult, have public hearings, people present their views, and on the basis of that we'll take a decision that we really believe it will be in the best interest of the province, best interest of our economy, but most importantly, best interest of the laws that we have uh, to ensure that everyone is safe. So there is a joint task team that we have just established uh, that will make its own public stance where people will submit their views and uh, on the basis of that will take a decision. So as it stands now, it's not a given that people who had taken a stance to protest against ETOs may not be required to pay the outstanding fees. There's a possibility that they may still need to pay that. Well, and there's also a possibility they may not have to pay that, depending on the, the consultation process, uh, how it comes uh, to fruition, to say this is the position that many South Africans feel that we need to take. Remember that people that are outside Houting as well, that have paid. Uh, so you have to have a mechanism on how you want to consult them. So we are leaving it to public participation, and uh, at the right time when that task team starts to engage and consult with South Africans, we'll know what will be the best way of resolving this matter. It's not an easy matter to resolve, I must emphasize that point. What happens in the meantime? Because Sandal says we still have a responsibility to recoup the money. No, in the meantime, we are going to pay the debt. Remember, you pay to, pay to save is a debt. So Houghton government has said to national government, we'll pay 30% of the debt, pay 70% so that we don't have a debt. And then we'll have our in-house way of us paying the 30%, then paying the 70%. We have already made a public statement that we are going to the commercial banks uh, to, 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 to raise funds to pay the debt. So if the debt is gone, uh, so there's no pressure about who was paying, who was owing, we'll, we'll have that process that I've just explained. Has Treasury uh, agreed to pay the agreed, we have signed documents on that, uh, that uh, we'll pay 30%, they'll pay 70%. So what you need to decide is how that 30% is going to be paid. Is it going to Which be... Which is the reason why it took long for us to scrap the ETOLs. Uh, when we took that decision, we thought which is last year when I tabled the state of the province address to say it also will be history. We've agreed with the National Treasury that will pay 30%. But National Treasury came to us and say, uh, show us the money. You can't say 30% you'll pay. Show us, where's this 30%? But, oh, and second, they said, we have proposal. We'll take 12 billion out of your budget so that we pay the 30%. And said, no, 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 no. Because to remove 12 billion from our budget was going to be catastrophic. Uh, it means schools, clinics, hospitals, social services will suffer. And we said, no, no, no. Let's engage on the mo modality of uh, paying that 30%. Uh, let's give you a proposal. And that's where we're having these uh, rough negotiations and difficult negotiations until they have accepted our proposal that we will go to the private market, uh, raise the, uh, the amount that is needed, give it to Treasury, and on the basis of that, we would have arrangement with the whoever that is going to lend us money. And I'm excited that majority of this institution have already started to knock that they're willing to assist us and tailor made a package that is not going to be a burden to people of Houghton. Why did it take so long to scrap the system? It was very clear from the onset that the public was not happy with it. Well, powers that be, uh, that are beyond uh, uh, my powers as a premier, uh, believed very strongly. Even the negotiations were not very easy. Uh, we just took advantage when the minister almost uh, two, two and a half years ago uh, made a bold statement that ETOLs will be phased out. And that window of opportunity, we jumped into it as a province to say, how do we help you? <laughs> to close those things. Uh, but for two years, we have to go on this hard bargaining. Remember, 
uh, at the initial stage, they said Gauteng must pay 60%, but because the roads are in Gauteng. And we said, no, 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 no. The roads might be in Gauteng, but they're not used by Gauteng people alone. There are many people that are coming here. So we can't uh, uh, pay uh, 60%. They then came back, say, pay 50%. We also resisted it. And when they go to 30%, we could sense that uh, it was going very difficult to bargain further beyond 30%. And we accepted that. And we have to start to put the legislation to attend to this matter. And that's the reason why it, it took that long uh, in the last two years. But uh, previously, the previous years, uh, MRD Mesh was very difficult to respond to that part, why it took long. Was it difficult to work with Tito Moweni on this? Yeah, extremely difficult. Uh, he had other views. Difficult, uh, extremely, extremely difficult. But... I don't blame him. Uh, he had to protect the press and he has to also have to protect the lenders. Remember, when you borrow money, uh, you borrow money on many things. You borrow money on behalf of ESCOM, you borrow money on behalf of SAA, you borrow money on, on behalf of local government. So you can't have one component that must spoil all the people in your history of borrowing money. Because if you don't save that particular debt, uh, all those people that need to borrow money in future, they will say, no, but you are a bad payer, check this particular thing. So, the responsibility of the Minister of Finance must be appreciated. Uh, it's not about Tito as an individual, but it's the institution that was leading uh, that they have to show us the red lights and areas where we need to improve. Uh, and the user pay principle, uh, it's something that I also endorse. Uh, when you use a service, must pay for it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just that in this instance, uh, we had false starts and uh, we have to accept the blame and then move on and, and deal with this matter. Who do you give credit for the scrapping of e-tolls. I think all the public institutions, have all institutions that have raised civil society. Uh, NGOs, civil society, political party, I mean, labor unions, uh, truck or motorist formation, whoever that have raised their voice, uh, we have to. But it was not going to be possible outside another component. So there's no one that can claim easy victory out of these things. You might have started the resistance, you must but the reality is that the final decision needed to be taken by certain institutions. You might have protested, but the final decision needed to be taken by all of but us. But the decision so was taken because of the pressure that was put on the Not government. necessarily. Uh, 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 I mean, the pressure... Uh, let's take Outer, for example. They played a very important role at the beginning. Uh, what did they do? They fizzled out and started to focus on other things, not on the, what they established. So it does not mean that they have abandoned it, but they went on other things. So. The pressure was there at the initial stage. Myself, when I was a TPT provincial chair of the ANC, I know you laughed uh, at us one day in a radio show when we marched to Pretoria as the ANC. Marching on yourself. Yes, you said you marched on ourselves <laughs> on it all. And it's that much that actually, actually turned uh, things because the ANC called us and said, guys, is there something that we are not seeing here? And then we started to put up. But I also have to thank MEC, and my former Premier David Makura. He put a technical team that put a convincing case to say, national, this thing is not sustainable. So it's all parties uh, that have been there for uh, 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 former MECs, Putla Ramukhopa, was part of the technical team that crunched the numbers. So you can't give credit to one. You have to give credit to other institutions. But obviously, you'll be naive uh, and ignorant if you can also appreciate the roles played by organizations uh, like Outer and many other formations that have been involved in this matter. What lessons have you learned from this? One big lesson is that uh, when you introduce an institution of this magnitude or uh, infrastructure development of this magnitude, ensure that you communicate its uh, 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 what I call management plan. Uh, because the people of Gauteng felt they were punished as Gauteng people whereas the e-tolls were about to be expanded to other areas, including the Western Cape. Uh, but at that time, we didn't communicate that it's not you, people of Gauteng only. Uh, it's going to go to other areas. So at that time, people of Gauteng felt that uh, we are punished for being in Gauteng and for these roads to be uh, in our province. So one is that you have to have a clear communication strategy. You need also to have to ensure that your consultation uh, tools are indeed, uh, uh, because Government has always argued, we consulted. Uh, it's just that people believe that that consultation was not enough. And government can justify that it was enough. But who will win? It was enough, it was not enough. When people are not paying, we owe 47 billion. By early this year, we have paid 21 billion in interest, but the principal amount was still there. So we needed just to bite the bullet and take a decision. And I'm excited that uh, in the next few hours, I will lead uh, that historic moment of switching off 
those countries for tolling purposes only, but are going to continue to use those countries to fight crime, to ensure that uh, we also use it for other administrative matters. There, I mean, uh, do you think this is going to have an impact on how people vote on the 29th of May? There was a time when the ETO issue was a, for lack of a better phrase, a, a hot political potato, and I wonder if that's still the case, given that this is only happening 10 years after people have been fighting fiercely for this system to be scrapped. What I can assure you, we didn't take that decision for political mileage. Uh, we took a decision that we've got 47 billion that we owe, and to date we have paid 21 billion. But the principal amount is still remaining because we're paying interest. Uh, economically, it does not make sense. Uh, and that's what influenced us. So, how poor uh, 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 voters uh, will determine whether this particular matter needs to be resolved, uh, it's up to voters. But we took a decision on the basis that uh, this system was not working, was not yielding the necessary dividends, but most importantly, we were reaching a point uh, where the economic standing or the lending standing or the lending stature of our country was going to be questioned, uh, that uh, we can't be good payers. So on that basis, we took a decision. But also, we're listening to people. Uh, people said, we don't want this, we're not paying this. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting part, Madi Major, to be quite frank, because people are prepared to pay the manual tolls. Uh, the one that is advanced, electronic, <laughs> Uh, that makes you not waste time. People said, no, we're not prepared to pay this. Purely because they were mainly urban based, uh, not necessarily at the periphery of our, of our province. So maybe that's the reason why people rejected it, that we're paying tax to build this road. Why are you double taxing us, especially as the people of Gauti? So and we've learned yeah, uh, and Because also lessons. they're already financially squeezed, yeah. the South Africans. There are already taxes that are being paid for the improvement of roads. So why an Indeed. additional tax? Indeed. Uh, uh, but, but as I said, the user pay principle is something that we must protect. Uh, it's not something that we must throw out of the window. We might have had a false start on this matter, but that does not mean the user pay principle does matter. You can't uh, encourage people to watch your show without paying TV licenses. Uh, if you watch SABC, you must know you must pay TV license. So that's a user pay principle that must be protected. But if I was already paying taxes that already go towards the um, management of, of the SABC, I can make a case that I'm not going to pay that TV license. So in the case of ETOLs, what do you say to South Africans who argue, I'm already paying taxes that should go towards the improvement of the roads. How Why am I being taxed again? Uh, I know it's a difficult call because uh, it's your employee. How much money the taxpayers have plunged in this institution outside the TV licenses? So they can't say because uh, we've bailed out SABC on several occasions, therefore we're not paying the TV licenses. I think it's a self-defeating uh, approach. Uh, well, it's a history that now we are ready to forget about it and let's be excited as South Africans, mainly people of Houthi, that come midnight, it holds our history. And I can assure you, Madi Major, they are definitely history. But are you accepting the concern by South Africans that we're already overtaxed? No, we no, didn't no. have to be taxed in this way for the improvement of the roads? Not on that basis. Uh, my argument is that South Africans' uh, uh, cost of living has ballooned uh, on the basis of one thing, my image, uh, is that public good is no longer public good. If the education system was a public good that was quality, me and you will not take our children to private schools. <laughs> If public good that is called health was good, me and you don't have, would not need for us to have medical aid. If public good was good, me and you will not uh, be worried about fuel because we'll be using public transport. If public good was the police, me and you will not need security at our houses and alarms because police will be mm -hmm. doing their work. So it's not on that aspect. It's an aspect of ensuring that we protect public good and ensure public good is quality, it's reliable, and it's available, and it's cheap. The sooner we lose the power of public good, and we are losing it at a faster pace, because where you feel uh, yeah. even higher education needs to be privatized. We yeah. are seeing more of private higher education system. Mm. So it's an area that as the ANC, you look at our manifestos, that we need to arrest that part. Uh, and as a premier of this province, that's an area that you want. You will see, we are bringing almost, we said it in the state of the province address, we are bringing almost 18 private hospitals. Uh, that we are bringing to be public hospitals uh, as a province. Uh, we are changing the education system in our province where we are having schools of specialization so that we can bring back uh, quality education. So it's the method and the desire to 
ensure that public good becomes public good. But if it's public good, it must not, it must not be of poor quality, and the people that we recruit must be expected that can assist to ensure that we change that. It's Why? going to take us time, yeah. but it's possible. Why has this government in the last 30 years failed to make that public good good so that it's good enough that a Clement or a Banyaz or a Sufi doesn't take the kids to private school, doesn't go to private hospitals, doesn't get additional private security because of the failures with our security system. Let me make this example. <clears throat> I hope you'll understand it, and I'll, 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 I'll use it because I come from the education space. Madmich, after 1994, if we said to you and your family, now that we've got freedom, we don't want your children to have apartheid education, keep your children at home for five years, we want to retrain teachers. We want to write a new syllabus. We want to write a new textbook. We want to build new schools. We want to ensure that uh, the education system is functional. There are no pee toilets. Where would we have been for five years? We would have disrupted education. So the price we are paying on the public good is because we changed the engine of the aeroplane while the aeroplane was flying. We are training teachers uh, about the new curriculum while they are still teaching in their for classroom. 30 years. For more than 30 years, we have, we have 13 education departments. Uh, you've got the education department of CISCAI, you have an education department of Transkai, okay. we have to put it in one. And in that process, we have to make this quality. And now, and some of us are arguing, I know you have to take a break, some of us are arguing that you must write one exam for matriculants because we believe we've reached a stage where quality now is at the level that we want it. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we will play some of your voice notes. We'll also talk to the Premier about some of the programs in Gauteng uh, to bring about employment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Let's play some of your voice notes that have come through. We've been asking you tonight on Face the Nation what you think are the measures that can be taken to ensure stable and sustainable coalition governments. Here's what some of you have had to say. Going once, it's going. They need to put the people of this country first before their pockets and their stomachs and their egos. I believe if they if they can put people, serving people before anything else, we will conquer this. Thank you. E dumelang libito ke sokolo pandera ni na tui yamu swamsa kani lo ke bone sintui tar tu sanche ka Afrika boroad ka wana ke shebile man le man o shebile oriena le pati a aiki efing tu ente ba yeta. Go to an affair, low bear cuts a lane job, leaking a one in Yamatisan, Kalevo. A question regarding eight holes. Why must the residents of Hauteng pay for eight holes when the debt or most part of the debt is prescribed in terms of the law? So legally, they are no longer obliged to pay. Why must the provincial government pay and then also the residents pay? So for something that is prescribed. Well, thank you so much for your WhatsApp voice notes. To pick up on that, that's an argument that Aute has been making, that some of the debt has prescribed. It's almost old. How do you navigate that? But still stands, maybe old. Uh, how many people are coming after you that if you've forgotten that you owe them? So we just have to protect the integrity of the lending regime uh, of our country and the relationship that you need. because. Money measure, it's a fact that we need a train, for example, from Tswane uh, to Limpopo, a fast train, a scouting. Uh, we are determined to have that particular train. Where will you get the money? Must go to the market. But if you don't have a good record, uh, they're not in a position to borrow you that amount of money. So I get the point, but uh, as I said, of midnight, this thing is history. We will manage it in a manner that it does not affect uh, the financial or the pockets uh, of, our, of our residents. And that's what we've been trying to protect, including services that we are rendering as government. Mm -hmm. You launched the Nasi Ispani program, was it last year, to address yeah. the issue of unemployment? Of how many jobs did you promise at the time and how many have you managed to create through that program now? 
Well, we are standing at uh, almost 90,000. Uh, we can fill uh, FNB Stadium with the people that have created opportunities in the last 18 months uh, when we took this responsibility. Uh, so we've surpassed even the targets that we set ourselves. Remember, when you came in, we only had 13,000 uh, vacant posts that were funded, but we're vacant, but funded. Uh, and then we, we, we then started to partner with various institutions, especially the Skills Center and many other institutions that came on board to assist us. But maybe let me give this background, uh, 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 Madam Mesh. We're hit by COVID. Many institutions were closed. So we need to restart uh, the economy. Uh, and it has happened and after war in 1945 or 1913 when we had so many problems. So we have to create soft jobs that, while we are still waiting for companies to find themselves, invest and get the necessary machinery and establish new factories, you can't leave the unemployed unattended. But the level of public sector employment is that it must resolve a certain problem. It's a fact in our country, uh, in our province in particular, that we have the highest rate of murder. I mean, 1,800 people died in three months uh, 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 in the last quarter. So we created uh, the wardens to assist us to fight crime, not just to create employment for the sake of, of, of creating employment. We also created uh, people that have to clean our streets because we have lots of debt in our street. Uh, we also had people that have to profile our residents, uh, those that need food parcels, uh, social grants that are not getting them. So we utilized our social ills or limitations to create jobs so that we propel the economy to start to absorb. Because the ultimate end, it's not government that must create jobs. Uh, it's ordinary people that must create jobs. So out of the 90,000, and I've seen some people criticizing us that uh, the others that are not paid, we'll have administrative uh, glitches on the basis of the numbers and also on the basis Do of- Do you know the number of people uh, that have not been paid uh, since February? Yes, we have, we have 150 people. 150, uh, yeah, what's 150. the reason for that? There are five different reasons. Uh, the first one, if we, for example, we employed somewhere before in our life, yeah, there's something that you call PESAL, it's a payment number. So if you have not registered that PESAL number, you will not get any uh, payment. Secondly, if you receive any form of grants, social grants, 350 grants, and you're employed by us, we are not going to pay you. Thirdly, by nature that, uh, of definitions that you are an unemployed person, <laughs> it means that you don't have an active bank account. And if you don't have any bank account, when you want to pay you, you find that it bounces because the bank have either frozen that account or discontinued of that particular account. Fourthly, you are employed by another government department and we have not declared to us. We are hiring you to be awarded only to find that we are doing expanded public works program there. That will not happen. Fifthly, which is majority of this, is administrative things where either have not submitted your full details, you have not given us a proof of address, you have not given us all the relevant documents that are needed and not concluded. So those are the five reasons that we have when we have this. Thing. So out of uh, the outcry, because we never had uh, uh, or, or planned that we'll get more than 90,000 people that we, are, uh, we have employed as the provincial government, we feel that we need to have uh, an ombuds-like office where whoever that we have employed out of these processes can have their complaints recorded, followed it up. So we are putting up a, com a, a mm -hmm. complaints office or an ombuds form is run by an independent person that will track to ensure that the credibility of this institution. The reason being, this weekend, <laughs> we are looking for 500,000 unemployed people uh, at the tune of 8.4 billion rents uh, that we want to bring to be trained to be plumbers, electricians, welders, artisans, so that they can participate in the future economy of Gauteng. We are repositioning the economy of Gauteng where we'll need this kind of skills. So 500, this weekend, 500,000. Is this That's for this a, financial year? A, on weekend, Saturday and Sunday. How much is that going to cost? 8.4 billion. Where's the money coming uh, from? From uh, UIF. The Department of Labor had a fund for skills development that we're not utilizing for years. We approached them as a Gauteng uh, government. We requested them to give us the so 500,000 unemployed people. We are asking them, what do you want to be in your life? And if they say, I want to be a welder, we'll take them to a school of welding, pay for their fees, give them a 3,500 average uh, uh, <laughs> stipend until they qualify to be a welder. And we've got future plans where we're going to use uh, their skills and their talent. It's something that has never, never happened in our country where you have to recruit almost 500,000 from the 90,000 that you have. Critics will be there because the people that don't like it, the people that think that we're electioneering, the people that think that we're using for it for popularity contests oh, and many other things and other things. Mm. So we don't have to listen to them because everyone's manifesto speaks about unemployment. 
But the problem is that that unemployment must be defeated by them only. Any other person that defeats unemployment or start a process of fighting unemployment must be labeled. Um, maybe it's political uh, maneuvering, we don't care. But our commitment to skill our people is real. Our commitment to employ our people is real. It's not influenced by any other thing but the desire to beat unemployment and ensure that poverty is defeated in our province. And these 500,000 people you're looking for could come from any political party? We don't even ask for political affiliation. I mean, even the membership of the ANC in Gauteng is not 500,000. So any person that say we're recruiting our own members is because they can't debate and argue with us. So you just ignore them because they're not putting alternative uh, statements. There are 500,000 people that are unemployed. Give us a plan. No one give us a plan. People shout that we'll create a job in each and every house. Uh, how? They're not even putting up. We are taking 500,000 people this weekend out of unemployment. We're taking them back to training. Not on unemployment list, unemployment list, but taking them back to training to train them about the future skills that this province of ours will need. And we really believe it's a bold statement that must be appreciated rather than How condemned. do we hold you accountable? So when do we check with you about the 500 people and whether they are in the system and on not Monday. unemployed? Monday. But you still need to train them. So yeah, we need to train them. We need to, we're recruiting them this week. We've started recruiting them. I mean, we opened last week. Uh, I'm told we are standing at almost 170,000 already, people that have registered online <laughs> that wants to be part of this process. So over the weekend, we'll get uh, maybe around another 300,000. So there are 500,000 people that we have taken them to TVET colleges, community colleges. We're converting some of our schools that are technical schools so that in the afternoon can train them. So we really believe it will keep unemployment busy, unemployed mm. people busy in our province. And um, we're excited that the minister have used our model to expand it to other provinces. All right. Premier Panyaza Lesufi, thank you so much for making time for us on Face the Nation tonight. Thanks once more, Madi Major, and uh, truly appreciate it. And best wishes with our show. Thank you so much. All right. Let's wrap up with some of your tweets that have come through. We've been asking you about the measures that you think are necessary to ensure stable and sustainable coalitions. Joss says it's simple. Politicians must serve the people, not their interests. That's Joss there. Camorello says there needs to be strict guidelines on coalitions which will make sure parties abide by the agreements they sign and signed agreements should have strict terms and conditions. We cannot have parties that jump ship every six to nine months. Mzuvukile says politicians who are not power greedy, politicians who are there to serve the interests of the people, pansy, your stomach politics, pansy. And that's how we wrap up the Thursday edition of Face the Nation. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with you on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Have a good evening. Cheers.